Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I am a furniture painter and refinisher. And what that means is I'm usually taking things that I find around my house or things I find on the cheap and I make them over into new creations. Today's video is going to be all about taking this dark dresser and turning it into a rustic barnwood restoration hardware kind of vibe. Normally you'll find me on here doing step-by-step -step tutorials so you guys can get the exact finish that I'm going for. But this project kind of took on a life of its own, so I wanted to preface it with a vlog type video before I give you the step-by-step, -step, just so you can see all of the work and pain <laughs> that went into it, and to just kind of teach you guys that sometimes things don't go the way that you planned, but you shouldn't give up and you should always push through. My next video that I upload will be a step-by-step -step process, so if you like the way this looks and you're interested in getting that look for yourself, make sure you subscribe before you leave and click that little bell notification and you'll be notified as soon as my next video goes live. Make sure you check out that description box below. There's gonna be tons of good info in there, including all the products I use and links to them, as well as how you can find me on my socials, especially Instagram. I do a lot of behind the scenes on stories, so you should be following me on Instagram. There's also a link to my Teespring shop. I'm wearing one of my shirts today. So there's shirts and hoodies and pretty distressed mugs on there. So go check that out. Thank you for hanging with me through all those announcements. If you wanna see how I got this look today, just keep watching. So this is my current bedroom set. I've had this since about, I think 2008, and I'm just looking to refresh this a little bit. The dark wood doesn't really go with the decor in my house. So I got this little picture in the mailer from a local furniture company, and it totally inspired me to make this over. So I knew the first step I was gonna have to do was strip it, so take a look at this. The side I did with my orbital sander, you guys, but my veneer is so thin that it was peeking through down here, um, which is no bueno, so I would have nothing to refinish and we'd be down to like plywood on here. So I got a stripper out and this is how much I could get off with a chemical stripper. Um, I used like the really strong one, I think, Next time I'm gonna use like the citrus one. I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to get off. Ugh. Not what I was wanting. The plan is I'm gonna try to strip that whole piece and just see what I can get it to look like. And if I completely mess it up, I'll just paint the whole thing. And it's just the one that I started with is my lingerie chest. So we don't even really use that. I don't need the space for it. So if I completely ruin it, I'll just move it out of my room. So like I said, I decided to strip it. So I got my orbital sander out and instead of using a really coarse grip pad on this, I normally use like a 60 or an 80. I put on a 150 so I wouldn't gouge the veneer because the veneer on here is really, really thin like I showed you on that drawer. So this is how that process was going. I was getting down to bare wood, but it was taking a really long time to get there. And then this happened. Ugh, you guys, I'm doing so good. And then I went right through the veneer. So I hate to say it, but I'm going to have to give up doing this and paint. It's okay. Sometimes projects take a different direction. I'm just so upset with how thin this veneer is. So lesson learned. Okay, I'm going to rally. I just was having a pity party and I'm going to rally. So I am going to keep stripping. I'm going to be even more careful than I was being. And go even slower than I was going. Try not to gouge through the veneer like that again. I think I am gonna try to strip this down, still stain it, the color is hoping like a natural oak color, and then I'm thinking whitewash um, over it or dry, dry brush white over it to kinda cover up those imperfections. So I'm not gonna give up. Don't give up, never give up. Okay, so here I am rallying. I had to flip this thing on the side because my arm was getting so tired from sanding. So this is what it's looking like. I swear this took me like an hour <laughs> to do. And then as you can see at the top and the bottom, there's still a lot of that dark stain. So that's when I just went a different route. I hate working with strippers, but I got this one out. It's a citrus one. It's a lot less caustic and stinky than the first one that I used at the beginning of the video. So I just grabbed an old brush and started painting this on and crossed my fingers. So you just let this sit for a little bit and it starts reacting with the finish and then you grab a putty knife and you just start stripping it off. So once I started doing this, I was getting pretty excited because it was taking a lot of the stain off and while it was leaving kind of that brown residue, 
I was thinking that's cool because that's kind of the color I was going for. This is my pile of stuff I stripped off of there. It's kind of satisfying. I kind of have enjoyed it. So yeah, this, uh, this has been a process, but we're getting close to getting all this junk off of here. So you do have to do several coats to get this off. Um, it does leave some residue, so you have to just kind of keep adding it. And I was using these, um, the steel wool, as well as these little brushes that I had to kind of get in the cracks and crevices and get all that stain off. Okay, so I'm glad this one ended up going south because I really like the way this is looking after doing the stripping. I'm kind of just liking it as is. Um, yeah, so. I think, I think we're getting close. I'm freezing. I've been sanding and cleaning this up. Um, but I really like the way it's just looking just like this. Yeah. Okay, lots of things cooking today because the frigid temperatures are gone. So I have some more stripper on here. Just trying to get the last little bits of this uh, dark stuff off that I was not liking. So we'll see how that goes. So I did like the way that this was looking, how the wood was kind of tinted like a brown aged look, but I didn't want these big flecks of stain. So I went through and added more stripper to them and just got off as much as I could. Normally here you want to use a plastic um, putty knife. I didn't have one and I don't really care if I make gouges in my wood because I like it to be distressed. So once I got it to a point where I got all the stain off that I felt like I needed to, I cleaned it off with this denatured alcohol, watered down like a 50-50 mix in a bowl and just used a rag and wiped everything down. You wanna make sure that you get like all that goop off before you start adding a stain or adding another paint. So I just wiped this down and then I let it dry um, for like a few hours or maybe I let it dry for a day. I can't remember. Okay, I'm back working on my dresser now that I've got my lamps complete and it is warmer. And I wanted to show you guys, I've got a new pair of goggles and I got a reusable mask for sanding and for vapors. So I wanted to show it to you. Okay, so these are my new goggles I got. They're impact and chemical goggles. Hopefully they won't fog up because they go all the way around my face. And then these are my filters for sanding that go on this mask. This is a reusable mask that um, comes with vapor um, filters. So I have both for sanding and for vapors. Finally invested in a good mask and set of goggles. Oh, I'm so glad about these. They, I know I look crazy, but they're very comfortable. Um, so I am just sanding down this piece to prep it before I paint and finish it off. So I'm just using a medium grit sandpaper here, rubbed it all over and then taking a tack cloth and wiping it down. Then I got ready to add my wash. So I am using Dixie Belle and drop cloth. I added a little bit of that to a disposable cup and then mix in some water about a 50-50 ratio and just stirred that up really well. Then I grabbed two cloths. Um, you need one to put it on and one to take it off. So just getting some paint on that first cloth and rubbing that all over the piece. Um, I like to go with the grain and kind of just rub it all over to make sure that I'm getting in all those crevices. And I don't leave this on that long because I just wanted like a very light wash. So I'm just gonna grab my uh, clean cloth right away and just rub all the excess off so you can see that it doesn't leave any streaks. It's just a nice wash. I got Tennessee hair, humidity, but at least it's warm. You guys, tip for the day, always listen to your mother. Even at age 38, your mom still knows a thing or two. Mother told me to that I should try adding some gray to this. So I did gray wax. Look at how gorgeous that is. I love it. So this is the Dixie Belle Besting Wax in Grunge Gray. You guys, and this was such a good idea. First, it was a good idea for my mom to suggest adding gray, but I'm so glad I decided to just wax it with a gray wax because it's adding color and finishing it all in one step. And this is really easy to use. It doesn't have a strong odor. You just get a clean cloth and I'm just wiping down the entire piece with this wax. And then you get a clean cloth and you buff it down about 15 minutes after you put the wax on. Sorry about this shot, the sun went down on me. Um, here I am measuring for new hardware. I did end up filling these holes. I'm not showing that because it's gonna add like eight extra minutes, but I just wanted to put that there because the cup pull that I got was gonna show a little bit of that circle. So I wanted to make sure that that was covered up, but it's not, you know, perfect. 
And I picked this specific pool just because it was so large. I actually got these at Target, which was a shock to me. I've never bought hardware from there before, but as you can see, you can barely see those holes underneath, so. So yay, it's finally finished after like a month. Again, to remind you, here is what I started off with and here is what it looks like now. Oh, you guys, I just love it so much. Let me know what you think. I'm obsessed with it. I can't wait to show you guys how to do this finish. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a little something different, just a sneak peek into my world and how my mind works. If you guys are loving this finish as much as I do, uh, make sure that you subscribe before you leave. My next video will be a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to get this process. And I know this video looked like it was a lot of steps, but actually now that I've gone through all of that, it's just gonna be like a three, like a three or four step process for you. So I think anybody can do this. I've done the hard work for you, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video. In the meantime, you can check out some of my other videos for inspiration, and you can always visit prettydistressed.com to see some more of my work. I really appreciate you guys being here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.